and just recently in the news, just such an object was reported. More than 100 times the diameter of the Milky Way. Now, of course, it extends as far as you can detect it. At our current detection threshold, it goes 140 times the diameter of the Milky Way. That's out there. So 140 times the diameter of our Milky Way itself is 100,000 light years across. So 140 times that, this we are talking way out in intergalactic space. So that currently holds the record. We might one day find one that goes even farther. A feature of this object is that it's coming from the center of a galaxy itself 7 billion light years away. That's halfway to the beginning of time in the age of the universe. And by the way, this galaxy has a name. It's called Porphyrion, one of the giants of Greek mythology. It turns out, as you look farther out into space, closer back to the beginning of time, black holes had much more material to eat back then in the centers of their galaxies than they do today. This is the origin of what we call quasars. Quasars, that's an acronym for quasi-stellar radio source, quasars. Quasi-stellar because a lot of intense energy is coming from a small spot on the sky. It's almost star-like. So we're, we're not as surprised to find such a luminous extended jet coming from the center of a galaxy that's that far away from us here on Earth. And as time moved on, the black holes ate everything that was near them and anybody else was at a safe distance, not to be eaten anytime in the near future. So it makes sense that this is an object as far away as it is. By the way, the very first black hole ever discovered, it happened like in my day, like when I was in college, I was working in the X-ray group at the Center for Astrophysics. It was a summer job, I was an undergraduate, and the X-ray group had pioneered small portable X-rays that would be launched into X-ray satellites that would then observe the universe for x-rays. We did the calculate, we, people did the calculations and knew that if you had a black hole and an accretion disk, the disk would get so hot it would emit x-rays. So you train your x-ray telescope in these regions of our galaxy, you create an x-ray catalog. Now there are other ways you can make x-rays in the universe, but one way you get them for free is in the vicinity of a black hole. So some of the best black hole candidates were first put forth by these satellites, these early X-ray satellites that were tuned to discover black holes in our midst.